Hello. I pray that you're well today. We're in a series of what about? What about? What about government? What about presidents and governors and mayors? What about elected officials? What about those that are in positions of responsibility for others? What about? The, the scripture uses many different statements about it. Let me read to you from 1 Peter chapter 2. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. You and I, as Christians, ought to be the very best citizens. We ought to be concerned about loving our neighbor as ourselves. We ought to be concerned about honoring we ought to be concerned about obeying. We ought to be concerned specifically about the process by which God wants to give peace and not chaos. But there is a danger, right? The danger is what's mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 2. It says this statement. You, my son, then, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus and the things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship as like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive a victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. A hardworking farmer should be on the first to receive the share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. In other words, as Christians, what ought we be the most concerned about? We ought be the most concerned about the population of heaven. What happens when this is all completed? What happens when our life is over? Have we, in fact, functioned in such a way, lived our life in such a way that people know Jesus Christ? Because, in fact, we have limitations. And God says this statement. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, it says, I urge them that first of all, requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving made for everyone. Pray for everyone. For kings and all those in authority. We are to pray for those in authority. Presidents, governors, mayors. That we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. For this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. In other words, you and I might have strong opinions and beliefs and ideas about government and economics and candidates. But our strongest ideas ought to be about heaven and the population thereof. Because God desires all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. We ought to be the best citizens we can be because we are those who live in two kingdoms, God's kingdom of grace and the kingdom of this world, what's called the right hand and the left hand. Let's pray. Dear God, we do, as you say in your word, we pray for those who govern over us. We pray for those who have been elected to positions for the president, for governors, for mayors, for representatives, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. But we pray that we as the church may speak the message of mercy, that all may be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. What about? What about government? What about presidents? What about governors? What about mayors? Ultimately, what about is that we must vigorously pray for them. God bless you.